The speed of sound is roughly 343 meters per second. So the sound of my voice travels through the air at this speed into your ear holes and gets processed by your brain in a matter of microseconds. But let's get even faster and smaller. The speed of light is roughly 300 million meters per second in a vacuum. Of course, this is an estimate, because the point I'm trying to make is all hypothetical. Light is roughly a million times faster than sound, or 10 to the power of 6 if you hate zeros, and takes the same amount of time to be processed in your brain through your eye holes, only all mirrored and weird and stuff. The speed of light and sound are physical laws that exist in our world that are constant. Well, in air, um, cause you need air, uh, for sound to vibrate. And then when light and sound goes into water, it, um, it slows down because water. Also, sound can't exist in a vacuum cause you need air to make wiggly air vibration ripples. And that is why space is really quiet. Sound vibrates at a much lower speed than light. However, both are linked by their fundamental nature of vibrations on a wave. Light exists on the electromagnetic spectrum, and depending on its frequency and wavelength, gets categorized into different classes. From low to high, the electromagnetic frequency follows this order. Radio waves, microwaves, visible light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Oddly enough, visible light from infrared to ultraviolet exists between a wavelength of 375 to 750 nanometers, which is mirrored by its frequency at a range of 375 to 755 terahertz. Nano means there are nine zeros before the decimal, making it really, really small. Tera means there are 12 zeros after the decimal, making it really, really big. So visible light is a really small, really fast oscillating electromagnetic particle wave that gets shot into your eyes. Now this is where things get weird. A low red will have a frequency of roughly 375 terahertz with a wavelength of roughly 750 nanometers. On the opposite end, a high ultraviolet will have a frequency of 750 terahertz with a wavelength of roughly 375 nanometers as frequency and wavelength are directly proportional to each other. So now here's where things get extra funky. Visible light from infrared to ultraviolet wavelength and frequency exist in a 1 to 2 ratio. If you remember my history of pitch, the 1 to 2 ratio is the fundamental of the musical octave. So knowing this, all light that we can see theoretically can be placed within a musical octave and then a scale. Now knowing that A4 is historically placed at 440 hertz, and that an octave is just doubling following that weird computer thing known as the power of 2, we can find the corresponding color by powering of 2 A all the way up to the range of visual light at 375 to 750 terahertz. The same can also be done using wavelength, as an A at 440 hertz has a wavelength of 78 centimeters, and as you double frequency, the wavelength gets cut in half till it reaches the range of visible light, which is around uh, 500 nanometers. It's much easier to multiply than divide for me, because we have to get 440 hertz all the way up to the tetrahertz realm, which is literally 12 zeros up, or 10 to the power of 12, or it's in the trillions. So after multiplying 440 hertz by 2, and then by 2, and then by 2, 40 times, till you literally get an A that's 36 times the human threshold of hearing, you get an A at 44, which is uh, approximately 483 tetrahertz, which would place the note A in a reddish orangey color. That same method can be done for every note on the scale to corresponding color, which gives you this color frequency to note frequency scale. A is orange, A sharp is yellow, B is yellow green, C is green, C sharp is a light blue, D is blue, E is a purple, F is indigo, F sharp is a weird unknown brown color, G is deep red, G sharp is light red, and then it repeats forever following the scale. Now, when you're playing chords or playing the piano, imagine all the colors you're mixing and mashing together as you play. A G major chord would look like this. The RGB, which is the primary colors that also makes TVs have that TV look. Then, here is a C minor chord, which is the most sad chord, and it would look like this. 
the color of Pepe. Even scales have their own colors and looks. This is a C major, and this is a C minor. Now, this is all theoretical, as people who automatically associate colors with sounds in their brains are known as crazy people. I'm just kidding. They're known as uh, people with synesthesia, which is an old Greek word meaning together sensation. I believe we all have mild forms of synesthesia. Some people might have extreme uh, forms of it. But like whenever I think of the letter A, it's always been read to me because as a kid, maybe I had a refrigerator magnet A and that was imprinted on my brain forever. I also feel like Tuesdays are red too because they give me like this weird red vibe. Also apples are red and they start with A, but that's, that's just um... Also the sound of color is known as timbre, which as you know is the texture of sound. And I know I pronounce that wrong, I pronounce things how they are spelled for the meme. I also know there are various types of noise that have different sounds, but those are for an another video for another day. If you enjoyed this video, you can give me a like or a share or a comment. Uh, things you want me to talk about are what type of colors and sound sensations you get when you listen to my music or other people's music. If you want to support my channel, you can always buy or listen to or share my music on Spotify and YouTube. Remember to create exponentially, like how I uh, took sound and then exponentially took it all the way up to light. And then I found out that there was like a pattern that you can just bring down. And uh, also check the description for the links uh, where I got all this info from. Because I know in the last video people were like, where are your sources? This is pseudoscience, blah, blah. And well, all the stuff that I did uh, is in the description. So there's even like this calculator, like this guy, he made like a C plus program. And he was like, oh, if you just put in your note, it'll give you the corresponding color because he did all the math for me. So it's more precise. This is just all, you know, rounded off to the biggest zero. So it's just easier to talk about. So yeah, thanks for watching. Also check out my social media because I'm going to be doing some live shows pretty soon and if you want to check them out and meet me and stuff and say hi, uh, you can just do that there. Thanks. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Available at Walgreens. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Available at Walgreens. Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on, apply directly to the forehead. Head on, apply directly to the forehead. Head on, available at Walgreens. You guys want to learn how to make a uh, future base first you get a lot of sugar and next put the sugar on a mirror and then stick a boba straw in your nose and just <coughs> and now you have future base it sounds like this be high than face my reality I'd rather lose my sleep than lose my sanity I wonder where does my heart truly belong when I sing these songs do I really mean them I'd rather be high than face my reality I'd rather lose my sleep than lose my sanity I wonder where does my heart truly belong When I sing these songs, do I really mean them?
even silent here in your warm embrace. The touch of your hand makes me feel like the man who can make your heart.